Hallelujah. For your glory, I will do anything. Amen. Amen. Have to be where you are. We got to be where you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Give the Lord a good hand. Amen. We're glad to come to you again by whatever social media outlet that you receive us on and we thank God for you looking in on us and, and receiving us. Dove Church is always glad to have you. We hear your comments. We, we read them. We thank you for your gifts and your support of ministry. And to those partners that regularly support us, we thank God for you and you help us get the word out continuously. And, and know this, that we are praying for you and believing for your life and believing that you would move into the place that God would have you in to explore the kingdom and to, to advance the kingdom of his dear son in the earth. And we bless God for you. 
Well, with that, we're going to move fastly into the Word, and uh, we're going to start with our confession. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand or wherever your Bible is on your iPad or phone, let's lift it up and say this confession. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. The day I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Amen. You sound good. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless you and we adore you and we thank you for what you sovereignly dispatch and give to us. And God, in Jesus' name, we come against every warring thing that wants to stop us from proceeding in teaching and proclaiming your word. We thank you for clarity and revelation knowledge. We thank you that this set of believers will have and, and listeners will have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying at this time to the church. And God, we thank you for what you do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. 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 And, and quickly, we're going to go into Jesus Revealed, last lesson, lesson five. Jesus Revealed. Are you all happy today? Smile a little bit. Amen. 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 How many has God been good to? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Lesson five. Insider information. Insider information is the title to this lesson or this portion of the lesson. I've been talking for four weeks previous to today about Jesus being revealed and Throughout this lesson series, I've almost said one line in each one of the lessons, and that is, Jesus is God's everything. Jesus is God's everything. Now I'm going to add another statement to that, Jesus is God's everything. Jesus is the sum total, S-U-M, total. Of all spiritual things. It's Jesus. He's the sum total. And we're going to revisit just, just quickly. One area. Again from Hebrews 1. 1 and 2. Everything is in New King James Version. And I'll dot to one other version down later when I give you that scripture. Hebrews 1, 1 and 2. And it says, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophet has in these days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of how many things? All things. Through whom also he made the worlds. So Jesus is the heir of all things. That's why I can say he's the sum total of all spiritual things. And that Jesus is God's everything as he is the heir to everything.
This one scripture is conclusive that Jesus has in, insider information. He has insider information. Why do you need Jesus? And we live in a culture that wants to excuse Jesus and go straight to God, but you can't get to God without Jesus. There's way, no way to the Father but by his son, Jesus Christ. And you can't excuse him out. You can't take him out. You, 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 you've got to address him. And so with, and the reason why you need to have Jesus, not only just for salvation purposes, because Jesus has insider information. He was with God before anything else was. So Jesus is God's everything. Amen. And it is not outside of your mind to think that when we have Jesus, we have the Alpha and Omega. We've said that for years. He's our Alpha and Omega. When we have Jesus, we have the Alpha and the Omega. We have the beginning and the end. Whatever beginning brings and whatever the end brings, he is both ends and throughout the middle, he's Alpha and Omega. And we have it all. But we only have it all because we possess Jesus. That's why you got to be saved. That's why you have to know Jesus. As Jesus reveals himself to us, we come privy, we become privy, privileged to get insider information from, from the throne room of God. We get insider information from somebody that, 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 that has firsthand information. He knows. John 5, 18 and 19. Turn there. John 5, 18 and 19. And I'm still in the introduction. When you have it, say amen. And it says there, does your Bible start with therefore? For the four of you to say it, amen. Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him. Because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father. Making himself equal with God. My God. Jesus said that. God is my father. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, The Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Jesus has inf insider information because he only does what he sees the Father do. And you can only see somebody do something if you are up close and personal to them. I can see Marcus running the camera because he, I, I, he's in the room with me. Inside of information. And so to have Jesus and to, to understand how Jesus can reveal so much to us about God is because he was with God and he is God what Jesus did is clear reflection of the will of the father and what God does The 
let's talk about two areas in particular where Jesus has insider in information. I could give you a whole running list, but I'm only going to do two in this final lesson. One is about creation and the next one is about love. But for right now, the first one on creation. As far as having insider information. That's why you can take his word. That's why you can believe what he says. When God wanted to create the world, or he intended to create the world, he pulled together a committee of himself, the Holy Spirit, and the Son. To create the world and man. Where is that found? Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. It said there. Then God said. Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let us make man in our image. Know this, that the image was more than likeness. I have coins in my pocket that have an image on them. I think the quarter has George Washington on it. That's an image. But when God said he made you in his image, he did more than stamp you a picture. Praise God. He gave you more than a picture. Part of God image was, was the creative force of potential. So God's image is also potential. To cre be created in his image means what he is able to do, he departed that inside of you. Potential. You've got potential. How many of you have ever been told you got potential? How many of you are living out your potential? How many of you are still working on it? <laughs> How many wish your potential would move faster? <laughs> Come on, potential. Get moving. But I want to tell you today, you are the controller of your potential. Oh, you may not think so. But you were stamped in his image. It's likeness and potential. The creative force of being able to do some things. Ooh. And God said, and you shall say. God spoke. The world in existence. If there's a mountain in your life, you shall speak to the mountain. Tell it to move. So your potential is leveraged in your action. And release by faith. You have not because you ask not. Jesus knows the potential that was placed in you. But not only Jesus knows that potential... Satan does too. Satan knows their potential. Because Satan was a not a part of the let us make committee, but he was in heaven. He was the worshiper of heaven. Satan has insider information.
He knows what God loves. Come on. Come on. And he knows that you were made in God's image and not him. There is not an angel that has God's image on them. I don't care how great they are. So they can only move at God's beckon. They are only limited to what they were created to do. Their job description. But you, he made like himself to produce. And to be fruitful. Repetitiously fruitful. Your potential is locked in the fact that you were made in his image. It's locked in that fact. John 10 and 10. You know it well. But let me run through this. It says... The thief does not come except to steal, kill, and to do what? Destroy. But Jesus goes on to share his purpose in the earth. First he tells you what Satan is trying to do. And then he goes on to tell you uh, 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 what his purpose was for coming to earth. But I have come that you might have and that they may have it what? Jesus understands more than abundance because of where he was. He doesn't understand just enough. I I, I have enough to get by. He's not talking about from paycheck to paycheck. Oh. He not talked about I have a fixed income. No, that's not the language there. That's not what the believer should get. It should get that he's talking about the abundance that he's witnessed. Whatever he does, he saw the Father do. He saw abundance, but beyond that, it was more than enough. It was every need met. There was no need. So he said more than abundantly. Jesus knows the high quality of life potential inside of you. What is this potential? I'm going to give you a short list. What is this potential? Unexposed ability. Reserved power. You have power. I play with my grandkids sometime and I hold their head and I shake them real hard and I say, power! <laughs> and they enjoy it immensely. I just shake them up and I say, power! Because I want to get them used to the idea that they are powerful yeah. in potential. And you know them crazy kids that come to me and grab my head and say, pow! Up. <laughs> and, 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 and my oldest granddaughter, who's also a baby, who talks wonderfully in a deep voice, she come to me sometime and she'll sit close by me and she said, now she calls me, she says other things to me, but I can't mention them to you, but... But she'll tell me, Bobby, you got the power. (laughs) I say, yes, I do. And then they get quiet, which means grab my head and shake it again. And I grab their head and shake it and say, power. See, because I want them to know how powerful they are. Somebody said, what is that power about? It's reserved power. It's in in your potential. 
That's power. I wish I could shake all of your head and just scream and shake power till you just fall all out. <laughs> the next one is untapped strength. You're stronger than you know. Untapped strength. The next one is uncovered capabilities. You have capabilities that you haven't even sourced out yet. You don't know you can't do it. You just say, I've never done that before. So that's the stopping point. Try it. Everybody couldn't do something at one time. I just got through watching the Winter Olympics, and Pastor Marcy and I's biggest question is, when did they know they could do this? When did you know that you could get on two boards and fly down a mountain, do a flip, and land on your feet? And it wasn't real to me until the camera position was looking down that mountain with the, with the person on the skis and their two sticks. And I said, you must be a fool. <laughs> Anybody ever thought that? How is it that the gymnasts know that at some point they can get on a little four inch wide beam and do a backwards flip. Well, it started by not saying I can't do it. It started by failing sometime, but all it took was one success. I can do it. Wow. I can do it. Me standing up here at this pulpit started with an Easter speech. Horrified. Here is that speech. What you looking at me so hard for? I didn't come to stay. I just come to let you know Today is Easter Day. <laughs> and they clap. Mom just thought it was just like I had just read the Gettysburg Address or something. <laughs> Mia, stop laughing. But everything starts from somewhere. It's called uncovered capabilities. And then when I would get in speech class, every, it would happen more often than I would care to mention. Uh, 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 one of the teachers, she, she pulled me to the side. I'll never forget this one in particular. She said, I think you're going to be a minister. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> she said, yes, you are. I was crazy. I should have just straight up agreed with her because I wanted to A. <laughs> I still got the A, but she was still right. Uncovered capability. Next one is unused success. Is it possible that between your birth year and your death year is a dash, and that dash can represent unused success? Don't give up because life happens. You still have unused success. There's still more songs to be written. <laughs> There's still a career to be jaunted out into. And sometimes where you are is just the springboard for the next. So you can't stop. While you're waiting on the next, you do something while you're working on the next because the next is going to come. So it's a few falls before you get to the fact that you stand on the beam and then you stand in the Olympics. 
Somebody say process. The next one is dormant gifts. You have gifts you haven't even discovered. And you know what the problem is? We don't get to the gifts that we have because we covet everybody else's gift. Let me say this about gifts. I'm not a singer. I can get the tune out most of the time. But I would never sell a ticket to come see me in concert. Because you all wouldn't be there. But I always wanted to. I would see them get up and just throw down. And, and what wears me out is that I look at somebody and, and, and you know sometimes you, 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 you wonder about people and, 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 and you know church folk do all kind of little crazy stuff before they sing. They say, they say this. <laughs> I'm a little harsh, but... <laughs> y'all, y'all pray my strength as I attempt to sing this song. <laughs> oh, you haven't been in church if you ever heard none of that stuff. Come on, y'all might well just work with me just a little bit. It's one of them kind of days. And then they step back and haul back and everybody say, oh, we ought to knock you out. Sang the roof off. Never mind the temp to sing, I want to be one of them. But that wasn't me. See, you have to explore the gift God gave you because your potential is in that gifting. That's where you will work it the best. And remember that a copy is always inferior to the original. Be an original. Not to do it like anybody else. Be an original. The next one is not only dormant gifts, but hidden talent. There's some things that you can do well. Just hidden talents. Dr. Miles Monroe is, is, is one of my favorite uh, preaching guys. He's in the presence of the Lord now, but we, we fell in love with him after I saw him on TBN one Sunday afternoon. And, and this is a quote from one of his, his, his books, Understanding Your Potential. The abortion of potential is the death of the future. The abortion a potential is the death of the future. And Satan comes to abort your potential. But Jesus knows from the beginning the potential God has placed in you. Then Jesus came to earth with several assignments. I'm going to give you a few of them. But he had several assignments to help ensure that you could operate in your potential. Luke 4, 18 through 19. And this is from the New Century Version. Luke 4, 18 and 19. New Century Version. And it says there, the Lord has put his spirit in me because he appointed me to tell the good news to the poor. He has sent me to tell the captives they are free and to tell the blind that they can see again. God sent me to free those who have been treated unfairly and to announce the time when the Lord will show his kindness. Come on, somebody. 
He sent me for those reasons. To set the captive free. Free from what? Hampered potential. Oh. John 3, 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He came to save you to get you back. What is the destroyed work of the devil that we read from John 10 and 10? It is the attempt to dismantle your potential. Number two, and I'm zooming ahead. What is the next insider information that Jesus has? And we hear it said all the time, but it's God is love. But Jesus knows God's love from a greater vantage point than we ever will. Because the things you think God should love, he loves. And the things you, you think he should kill, he allows to live. If it were left up to you, half the population would be gone. Putin would be out of here. God loved us when we were unlovable. Romans 5, 7, and 8. And it said there, Romans 5, 7, and 8. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't die afterward. He died while we were in the midst of our stuff. Ooh. Well, the righteous man does many things right, but he might not have a heart. And the good man does many good deeds. And the word says people would readily die for them. But what about the unrighteous? What about the, the messed up ones? Ooh. That's how God demonstrates his love. He demonstrates it on the messed up ones. Second Corinthians 5 and 19, you don't have to turn there, but it says, God was in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. With emphasis, I read that. It's as if God stepped inside the body of Christ so that through Jesus' body, he could, he could reconcile. The word reconcile means call back into union. What was divided from him. You need Jesus is because God worked through Jesus to call you back into union. That's love. That's love. The demonstration of God's love isn't just that. Jesus died, but it was for whom Jesus died. Jesus had insider information about this level of love. He willingly participated in this level of love. How? How did Jesus participate in it? He participated in it before he died on the cross. 
He participated in it from an insider information position. He was with God and he said something. And he did something. Hebrews 10 and 5 says, Therefore when he came into the world, he said, he said to God, Sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, Jesus said, Behold, starting in Genesis, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. So Jesus as an insider said, I'm starting at the beginning in Genesis. And I'm coming to die on that cross. But I'm coming to reconcile, to bring them back into union. So that their potential would be released into the kingdom. That's a different level of love. In other words, Jesus said, I saw how you love, Dad. And I came down to love like you. I came down to do it like you. Oh, they are lovable, but you love them. They messed up, but you love them. They in a mess, but you love them. Whew. Jesus is God's everything. Blessings to you. How many are glad you love today? Come on, let's worship him in praise. Make it personal. I, he loves me. He loves me. If you heard this message today, we want to give you an opportunity to step into this type of love from the Lord. The Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so with that, we want to give you an opportunity. You're looking at us. You can say this confession. And move into the love of the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin and I give you my life. Today, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Today, Jesus, I believe in a miracle. I believe that one day, you died on a cross. And three days later, you were raised from the dead. And with that confession and with that faith, I am saved. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, find a good local church that is teaching, worshiping, bringing clarity to the word for you helping you move into your kingdom life and kingdom potential. We're Dove Church at the corner of Military and Horatio, 4660 Military. Our phone number is 361-DOVE, D-O-V-E. Leave us a message. We'll get back to you. Look us up. Find our webpage. We'll respond. We love you today. Thank God for you today. Come on, put your hands for them all over this place today. Amen. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you, and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, 
which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.